Hello everyone. In this tutorial we are talking about SQLite database that comes with Android. Let's take a look at the main activity XML file that I have defined. Going from top to bottom we can see that there are two edit texts. One is for entering the first name and the other one is for the last name. Reason for this is because the database that we are building will have a table named student that will contain three columns ID, first name and last name. Okay, let's move on. I also created four buttons. Each of them is responsible for certain operation. As you see, button for adding student deleting, updating and also a button for listing all students. A result from students listing will appear in this text view that I placed at the bottom of the screen. Also I would point out that I set the same on-click listener for all these buttons. Listener that I have defined is named btn click. On this way we will avoid referencing all buttons in the activity and also avoid setting a click listener for each button individually. When it comes to main activity I just referenced our two edit texts first name and last name and the text view using the find view by id method. Okay, so that is the setup. Now let's create a class that will manage all database operations. I'll name this database DB controller. First, extend this class with the SQL Lite Open Helper. Then press Alt plus Enter combination keys and choose to implement these two methods. Then Alt plus Enter again and choose to create a new constructor. Choose the first one. The only thing that we are interested in this constructor is the parameter name. It represents a name of the database file. You can name it whatever you like, just make sure that it has a extension .db. Okay? When the database is first created, uh, it will call the onCreate method. So in this method we will actually execute a query for creating the table. Use this parameter SQLite database and call the function named execsql. In the brackets we simply type the SQL query or statement for creating the table. So we type create table students then open bracket. As I already mentioned we have an ID, first name and last name so continue with ID integer also set it as primary key and set it to auto increment because it is an ID. Then first name with the data type named text and also make it has a unique constraint so that we don't have two students with the same name. And finally last name data type is also text. Close bracket. Whenever a database is upgraded from one version to another we can add columns, we can delete columns, but most of the time it just gets rewritten. So we will upgrade the database in this onUpgrade method. Just execute the query drop table if exists and the name of the table which is students in our case. Then simply call the onCreate method passing in the SQLite instance. Next, uh, create a new method for inserting a student. For the parameters we will provide first name and last name because that is the kind of information we want database to be filled with. For inserting a record it's common to use a class named content values. It works like a hash map containing a key and a value. For the key you type the name of the column that you are accessing and for the value you just type the value you want to have it in that column. So in our case we will simply put first name as a string 
for the key and for the value we will just pass the value that we get from the method parameter same applies for the last name then to write these values into the table type this dot get writable database and call method insert or throw this method insert or throw will insert a new value into the database or it will throw the exception if there is a constraint on the column as you remember from before I put the constraint on the first name so that there can't be two students with the same first name for the first parameter we provided the name of the table which is students and second parameter we can just skip and the third one we pass our content values now new method for deleting the student we'll delete student by providing the first name so provide the first name as a parameter method that we can use but we are not obligated to is called delete again first parameter is the name of the table and the second parameter is the actual where condition in this part we don't supply keyword where we only provided the condition that we want and third parameter just type null we don't need it next method is for updating the student for this demonstration we will just change the first name of the student so that means we need an old student's name and a new student's name execute SQL command update students set first name equals to our new first name and the condition is where first name equals to the old first name that we supply from the parameter and finally the method for listing all students include the text view as a parameter because the result will be shown in it in order to read records from the table it's common to use a class named cursor call the method raw query and type the simply query for selecting all students then to go through each row we can use cursor dot move to next method meaning that it will go from the first row of the result to the end row of the result then we will simply append our text view with cursor.getString method and we will pass first the number one uh, number one indicates that we want to select a first column remember that we have three columns ID first name and last name and the counter for these columns goes from zero so in order to pick the first name we will supply number one because first name is one and to pick the last name value just type get string with the number two okay just uh, before this loop reset our text view so that we always get the new values shown on the text view and that's about it for this class now let's finish up the main activity we didn't implement the listener for our buttons so go to the XML layout file click on the listener method and press on keyboard alt plus enter and choose to create this method in the main activity okay then simply switch the ID of this view and make a new case for each button like this okay uh, let's reference our DB controller class and initialize it in the onCreate method for the context choose this because we are calling it from the onCreate method then for the name you can type whatever you want because it doesn't matter really we already defined it in the our DB controller class then for the cursor just leave it to null and the last parameter is database version so if we want to upgrade to the bigger version choose a bigger number when you first create a database choose a number like one now let's call all these created methods on corresponding button clicks so on add button we will insert a new student 
passing in the edit text values for the first name and the last name. We are also putting this call inside of the try catch block because we want the we want to catch the exception when we add the student with the same first name and in this way we will show the error. So to show this error we will create a new toast message. Okay, uh, delete button will call delete student method with the value from the first name edit text. Then update student. We said that we need a new name for the student, so we will prompt the user to enter a new name. To make uh, this new pop-up dialog we can use alert dialog builder. Then simply create a new edit text and set this edit text as a dialogs root view, like so. And also implement the dialog on click listener. And inside of this listener, execute the update student methods from the controller class. And also, in order for dialog to be shown on the screen, type dialog.show. And now for the end, call the list all students method, passing in the text view. Okay, that's all. We, we are done. Uh, now it's time for emulator. So here I'll, I'll type my first name and last name, click on add, then list students, and you see the record has been added. Let's add one more, list students again. Oops, it looks I forgot to add a new line when reading from the cursor. So just go to the DB controller class and add a new line at the end of the text view append. Now it should work. Yep, it is good. Uh, let's add one more record. Okay. Now to try out the update method, let's type the new name for this student named Mark. Uh, we can type like uh, Peter. And you see the student is updated. Uh, what we have next is uh, delete so let's delete this philip555 student press list again and yeah it's working nicely one more thing let's try to add an existing student philip so as you see we get the toast message saying that he already exists i hope you enjoyed this video thanks for watching see you bye bye